Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Sabbath School this morning, where we will be discussing the hard way, which is part of the Isaiah lesson. Um, so welcome to our Sabbath School lesson. And if you are interested in having a Zoom Sabbath School versus a Facebook Sabbath School, just shoot us a message and let us know, and we'll send you that link. But to get started, we will start on our lesson off this morning before we start into the study with two testimonies. And we'll ask Pastor Stoyan to share his testimony first. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, all of you, for watching. Uh, I see that many and many people are, are looking and, and watching our, our Bible studies, which is, which is wonderful. And a lot, all of you have testimonies to share to your friends and your brothers in, in, in faith. Uh, I want to share one of the testimonies that, that this week um, I had. Uh, I met two, two individuals separately, and we were talking about the Sabbath. And one of them was, um, he is an ex-evangelical um, pastor. Okay. And when we reached that topic, because all the other doctrines he accepted, all the others said, no, this is not a salvific issue. That I have never seen that. That's beautiful. But when we reached the Sabbath, I was very against. Uh, and the other one also, who is a, he has knowledge about the Bible. He's very good knowledge about the Bible, but he accepted all the other truths, but only this one, not. And um, I was, I'm wondering why we as human beings reject the truth. We don't have any reason to reject it. Like everybody has Sunday and Saturday free, more or less. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen that we are struggling. And um, I bring before you all of these, uh, these two gentlemen, these two brothers in faith to pray for them. But I learned something that the, every time the truth, it's so hard to accept, especially about the Sabbath, it's so hard. And I think the more we go in time, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. And I have no, I don't understand a little bit why, but on the other side, I understand that is the fact that we are blind and many people are blind. Satan is blinding them. So let's pray for these people who right now, they, under, they, leave, they, they learn about Jesus, they know about the truth, but they don't have power to take decisions to follow the truth in Jesus Christ. Mm, amen. So we'll be praying for them. Yes. yes. And we also have a testimony by our sister, Heather. Well, I want to testify of God's hand in my life in small things. Um, on Sunday this week, I went out to run some errands and my car wouldn't start. At first, I thought it was the key in the, the battery in the fob that wasn't working. And um, I was vacillating between, you know, just walking to the pharmacy and buying a battery or researching what's actually going on with the car. So I called my son and he said, he told me some things to do and it still didn't work. I called a friend to ask her to give me a ride to the health food store because I wanted to get there um, before they closed and get some, some vegetarian things. Um, she said, she asked me if it's the car battery or my key fob battery. I said, I think it's the key fob battery, but my son thinks it's the car battery. I said, well, just give me a ride so I could get there and get back before they close. So she said she's on her way. Uh, my son walked me through some more tests and told me it's the car battery. Uh, so now I'm wondering, how am I going to get to a place to change the battery? But these new vehicles, they hide the battery from you mm. so that you can't find it. Mine is behind the headlamps behind the wheel hub, behind the fender. Oh. So I need expert help to get it out. Um, so my, my friend, she turned up with her husband who knew how to rectify a problem that was going on. So I was thankful for that. And he, they, both of them took me to get a new battery which was very expensive because they have to do all that. The battery was cheap, the labor and everything brought it up to quite a bit. Um, but the thing about it is I, I'm not despairing because when I was sitting there saying, Lord, what will I do? He told me what to do. 
he sent someone to help me who was knowledgeable. Um, he had my son help me. He was free, so he could help me also. And he also designed that to happen at this time when we had an extra pay period for the month. <laughs> so I was able to pay that exorbitant price for my battery and my car is running. So I'm thankful to God for keeping me mobile. Amen. And sometimes it is the little things that remind us that God's in control of everything. Mm -hmm. that's right <laughs> because I mean you were sitting there imagine you had walked to the store to get your key fob battery and got home and missed the health food store and the car still wouldn't have worked yeah I still miss the health food store but I need to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables anyhow <laughs> <laughs> and that's available all the time yes <laughs> from anywhere <laughs> well awesome thank you both for sharing those testimonies and as we normally do, we have prayer requests. Um, we've seen a lot of prayers answered through the Sabbath school group um, throughout the time that we've been doing this. And we continue to pray for some of our prayer requests as their ongoing prayer requests. So we will ask that if anyone has any prayer requests for this week, please shoot us an email, shoot us a message, let us know, and we will be praying for you through the week. Um, but for our group, do you have any prayer requests this morning? I do. Okay. Um, my mother's brother died last week, this week, and um, well, they're, they're sorry that he's no longer here with us, but we, we know who he served and expect to see him on um, the second coming of Jesus on the resurrection morning, but I'd like prayer for comfort because he was a twin, he was one of the twins, and his twin sister is pretty broken up. But most of all, I'd like um, this event to prick the hearts of those who haven't given their lives to Jesus so that they could see that, you know, when somebody you know dies, you realize how finite we are mm -hmm. so that we could, they, they can be, make that decision before it's too late for them also. Amen. to get rid of that and do you have any other prayer requests this morning i'd like to be praying for um a couple that i'm getting to know a little bit ixa and william harrison um, they both are getting over the covid but it's been quite a struggle so i'd really like to be praying uh, for them and also for ursula our friend ursula I've been visiting also uh, Alcora, and she was she um, she stands on her feet. She's walking. She went to also the dentist, and when I I visit her, I think it was Sunday, uh, she was so happy. I have never seen her from my all my life uh, such happy, uh, oh. so happy that she was right now. And I said, wow, that that's incredible. When I say how I ask her how she feels. She said, I feel wonderful. I, I see life. Amen. But the doctor still said that she isn't in danger and she might die in every minute. But she's oh recovering well. She's recovering well and she's making huge Good. progress. So let's have let's continue to have her in the in prayer. Also, their sister Ethel Barton and her family. Um, and there are many other people who are sick in, uh, in Hampton Roads and also Western Branch. So please let's keep in prayer those who are sick. All right. All right. Any other prayer requests this morning? If not, we will have Sister Mary Lou to pray for our prayer request and also to open our Sabbath school this morning. Okay. All right. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, it is good to be with like minded people this morning. Mm -hmm. It's good to be before your throne of grace. We are so very grateful for this gift of prayer that you give to us, for your word, for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we have praises today, and we want to, first of all, praise your name for the good health that Alcora El is experiencing right now. We're very grateful that she is feeling as good as she does, Lord, and we hope that she has continued health. We pray that you would 
keep her under your care. She still has a long way to go, Lord, but we are asking that you would bless her. Praise for Lord Heather's uh, friends and son who helped her with an issue uh, with her car this week. And it's wonderful when people will come alongside us and be willing uh, to, to go the extra mile. So we just thank you for them. We ask that you'd be with our pastor and his family. Place your angels around his home, Lord, and guard him and bless him. Keep him close to you. And Lord, we, we want to lift up the Burton family and the Harrison family. Mm -hmm. Many of our, our brothers and sisters are struggling. Ursula has been struggling with her health. Mm -hmm. And she um, has been in the hospital, Lord. We ask that you would place your healing hand on these that they might recover. We wish for all of those with COVID, all of those who have struggled with the loss of family members, Lord, we ask for comfort for them. We pray that you would be with Heather's family as her uncle has passed away. We ask that you would especially be with his twin sister. I'm sure that that's a, a very difficult thing, Lord. I've seen that in my own family. It's very hard to let go of someone so very close to you, but they have hope. They have hope for future. And right now, Heather is asking that you would come close to the other family members, that you would touch their hearts, Lord, and help them to realize that this, your coming is very, very soon, and that there is much that we can do to be sharing the gospel with those around us when we are convinced and convicted of your soon return. We pray that they would give their hearts to you. And also for these two brothers in the faith, Lord, who pastor was able to witness to this week, but they have rejected the Sabbath thus far. We know, Lord, that we can still have hope because yeah. your Holy Spirit does not give up on us. So we pray for these two gentlemen that you would especially draw close to them. Please, Lord, mm. don't let them settle for what they've known in the past, but open their eyes. We pray this all in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that prayer, Sister Mary Lou. And so we will hop into our lesson this morning um, called The Hard Way. And this is a continuation of last week's lesson um, where we talked about Ahaz and what he was doing um, going his own way. And now, so now we'll kind of see the consequences of that and discuss that a little bit. So let's go ahead and go into Sunday's lesson called Prophecy Fulfilled. Because we ended last week's lesson on a prophecy. We were discussing that prophecy of Emmanuel and the child that would be born. Um, so now we'll go and see what happens. What's next? You know, there's always a good story where it leaves you with a cliffhanger. Last <laughs> week we had a cliffhanger. This week we'll see what happens. Um, so we'll start by reading Isaiah chapter 7 verses 14 through 16. It's Isaiah chapter 7 verses 14 through 16. I believe 14 is where we ended last week. So this will kind of overlap just a bit. I can read it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. The Lord will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house, days that have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. Okay, so when we look at this, um, what was the prophecy that we had here? And that's that chapter, um, that verse 14, and I guess going into 15, what is that prophecy? Well, the sign would be given that a, a, a child would be born to a virgin, and, and we understand that this is pointing forward to our Savior, um, 
his name would be called Emmanuel, and that would be uh, literally God with us. And when we, um, when it's the, the 16th verse, this is kind of a recap of last week. For those who may have missed it, if you did miss it, go back and watch it. Um, that verse 16, where it, it talks about um, the, well, said, I'll read it. For behold, the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good. The land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. What kings are we talking about here? And what lands are we talking about here? It's in a in a directly way we speak about the Assyrians and Syrians. We speak about the yeah, but in the same time also speaks about the coalitions of kings that are coming against uh, Israel. So uh, we speak about the the fact that uh, in a spiritual way we speak about the fact that all kings that are coming that we are relying all the power that we are relying on, if we are not going to Jesus Christ will come to the end, will come to destruction. And we see right now, many people are relying on their stock market, they rely on the bank accounts, they rely on the power of the government. Many people are happy that uh, President uh, Biden right now is on, on, on the power. And many people are relying that on this government, on a solution, a better solution to come from, uh, from outside of them. But the Bible and also this pastor is very clear says, hey, you will be slaves. You will be living in the wilderness. You will eat honey. You will eat, um, it says, skirts and honey. In other words, be aware. Where are you heading? Uh, in, in, and and the, the words that are here, skirts and honey, are related that there will be a time that individuals, they will live only by faith alone. In the sense of that coalition against God's people, the kings and all these uh, powers practically one day they will come to to uh, to down uh, will come down and we will be left alone if we do not build right now on God's promises and Ahaz for instance Ahaz he had plenty of opportunities to build on on God's promises and God's action and miracles and uh, it's incredible because God was talking directly to him uh, to the prophets we don't have right now this this blessing. We do, even though we have through the writing with Ellen G. White, we, do, we have something, but he avoided, he let aside all of this. So there will be a time when God's people, they are not going to hear any more, any advice, any news from Jesus Christ and their hearts, they will be hardened. In other words, the more miracles and signs they see, the less actions we will take. And we see right now, we are right now, uh, uh, all of you that are watching right now, we see the events happening in the world. We'll see how all the things are moving so fast, but we have no power to change. We still rely on those kings who still rely on our pockets, on, on what we have in the banks. So shouldn't we take this example and, and come back to Jesus Christ? Because he had given us a promise, and the promise is Emmanuel. God, only God, is with us. Amen. Amen. And so when we also, you were also talking about the, the kings, the Syria, uh, king of Syria and northern Israel, and that being fulfilled, because that was what was happening with Ahaz, and that was how he went to um, Tiger, I can never say his name, the king of Assyria, um, <laughs> to, and offered that to him. So when was that, let's look at um, when that was fulfilled as well. Let's read Second Kings. 16 verses 7 through 9. I have it. Okay. Show for it, have it. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglat Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me out of the hands of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel who rise up against me. Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in God's house and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria listened to him and the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried its people captive to Kerr and killed Rezin. Okay, so we see here that there is this conflict going on. 
Um, and we know we, like, as Pastor was saying, that a lot of people rely on what their their own devices here or on the government or what have you. Imagine taking yourself out of a hazard situation for a moment and putting yourself either in Syria or in the um, northern Israel at this point. How would you rely on your faith, seeing that you're being attacked? You had this, you know, everything was going great. Your kings were in power, and all of a sudden, you're being attacked by Assyria not knowing what's really going on. Where does faith live in this situation? Hmm. Well, you have to go back to the character of God, you know, because um, if, if you know someone and you know what their character is, you look at the circumstances you're in based upon that. So we say God is love and whatever he do is for our benefit. So you have to trust him where you can trace him in, in a lot of situations because that's how our faith is built up. You know, because if he, if he came with an explanation for everything, you know, I don't think we will have as much faith as in going blindly through things, through the valley of the shadow of death and remembering what David's well yeah what David said because he was dead already and um that he will be with him I will be with you through, through the valley of the shadow of death and trust in that uh, because they have the stories of the patriarchs they had the stories of Noah to be able to look back and see that God is faithful it, it's it's a difficult situation you know, um, I think I could say that easily now sitting at home, but with um, war and slavery and all those things surrounding your nation, you have to be really grounded to believe that whatever comes about, praise God through it and trust him in it. Amen. I think that if you, if you don't have a really good, solid relationship with the Lord, any of this would have terrified a person. So I would think that there were some that were still trusting the Lord, no matter what it was that was happening, no ma matter what was taking place. But like Heather said, it would be extremely difficult without faith. I don't understand how people actually live their lives, especially in a day like we're living now. And I, and I think, too, that, you know, even though these things were happening, I believe God would have sent a message to the faithful to get out, you know, flee, go, go to another country. Um, Many people say they went in Judah when that problem came. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to see that picture of, of the war, how uh, Ahaz is asking Kel for Assyria. Um, in how Assyria finally becomes the, the number one uh, conquered uh, Samaria, conquers, for instance, Israel. And it's the way that the power that we are relying on or the, the thing that we are relying on, they are coming against us. If we, if we are not putting Jesus Christ in the first place. Mm -hmm. so in other words, those things that pleasures or things that we have put in our hearts in the first place, those would be the one to dominate, to take us, to, to take us uh, and, and to overcome us. Do not rely on any other thing, power, political power or, or finance, <laughs> because all of those will work against you. And it's interesting that Revelation chapter 13 speaks about the fact of the mark of the beast, speaks about, about how the kings will come together, how the defeat, the, the, how do you call it, the, um, the deception will be so big that many God's people, many of them, They'll join the Babylon, and and it's it's incredible because we will we'll be will be uh, right now it's happening. We see clearly that our churches are sleeping, uh, our churches are not awake, even though the events are coming before us, and we live a difficult time. We still don't have power to awake, and it is because the Babylon strategy is to buy us. Assyria in the beginning was very pleasant, was very good. They were bought. They gave a lot of money from Israel. But only for a short period of time, they had peace. 
for a short period of time. And after a few years, Assyria became so strong, so powerful that no kingdom in that time was able to overcome them. So they were the one, Israel was the one to, to feed, to give them more power, to give them more, more, uh, more money, only mm -hmm. and stronger and stronger and stronger. So the question is for you today, those who are watching, what are you feeding? Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you feeding? What, what are you supporting? What are you giving your money to? What are you giving your efforts, your, your time? I was talking also this week with, with a person in Bible study, and we were talking about stewardship, okay? Because sometimes stewardship, we see it as being only ties and donations, no support. No, uh, this is only a section. We have to give every single day a ties for Jesus Christ from our time. We have to give to Jesus Christ every single day a ties from our belonging, what we have, from the gifts we have in the church. Many people say, Pastor, I am tired. I cannot do anything in the church. I, it's overwhelming. But Jesus is asking us, those gifts that he had given us, to return it, to put it in, in practice and to develop and grow. So if we do not right now invest in something that will last forever, which is Jesus Christ, we will lose everything we have. Uh, so in what, what we are investing, yeah. Okay, so let's um, continue on to Monday's lesson. And we will read, there's two different parts of the verse I wanna read. Um, we'll start with Isaiah 7, 15, which we've already read, but I wanna read that again. So Isaiah 7, 15. It says, mm -hmm. um, oh, go ahead, Heather. Isaiah 7, 15 says, he shall eat butter and honey when he knows to refuse the evil and choose the good. And then we're going to hop over to Isaiah 7, 18 through 22. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will whistle for the, for the fly, for the flea. That is the farthest part of the rivers of Egypt. And for the, for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And I can also? And all the way to 22. Okay. They will come and all of them will rest in the desolate valleys and in the uh, clefts of the rocks and on all thorns and all pastures. In the same day, the Lord will shave with a hi uh, hired razor with those from beyond the river with the king of Assyria, the head of the hair of the legs, uh, the, uh, and will also remove the bread, breed, beard. It shall be in the day that the man will keep alive a young cow in two sheep. So it shall be from the abundance of milk they give that he will eat curds. For curds and honey, everyone will eat who is left in the land. So what is the connection between what we heard in the prophecy in 15 to what we're seeing is happening here with the desolation of the land in 18 through 22 and actually continues through I think like 20 um, to the end of the chapter but we only read a portion of that. What is the connection of the prophecy and the fulfillment here? The, the, prophecy, the prophecy was was exactly clear what will happen with God's people and the fulfillment was after a few years exactly happened. And we see how Israel, for instance, was desolated. Practically, there is no trace in history after that about a nation as Israel. All Assyrians, they came and they settled in that place. And it's interesting that the words that he's using right now, for instance, curds and honey, means you will be, you will have no land. You'll have no house. You'll have no identity. You will have nothing at all. And you'll be a refugee. You'll be one who lives, who will be all the time running from your enemies. Because curds and honey, honey are the things that people, they were eating in the wilderness when they were running, when they were living, living as slaves. In other words, they were not the owners anymore of their land, of their properties, because they gave up everything, all the goods they gave to the enemy, and the enemy took everything. And so let's look at what was happening to our friend Ahaz at this time. Uh, let's read Second Chronicles chapter 28, 20 through 25. 
Um, I have it. Okay. Second Chronicles 28, 20 through 25. Yes. Tiglath Pineza, king of Assyria, came to him and distressed him, but didn't strengthen him. For Ahaz took away the portion out of God's house and out of the house of the kings and out of the princes and gave it to the king of Assyria, but it didn't help him. In the time of his distress, he trespassed yet more against God, this same king Ahaz. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which struck him. And he said, because the gods of the king of Syria helped them, so will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. Ahaz gathered together the vessels of God's house and cut in pieces the vessel of God's house and shut up the doors of his house. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. In every city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense to other gods and provoke the anger of God, Yahweh, the God of his fathers. So what was happening to Ahaz? I mean, we go from him, from God speaking directly to him and saying, test me and see, and I will prove to you who I am to this. What happened and how did he bring this downfall upon himself? I think there are no words to describe it. I, I have no idea how that happened in the mind of a human being who, who sees the miracle of Jesus, who sees uh, that God is, is the one to save. He has the power to keep us, to deliver us from all problems. And all of a sudden, he turns against God and he brings all of these idols. And by the way, all of those idols and all of those they call gods, they lost all the wars. And, and, they, and they saw, they were worshiping those gods, for instance, but they had no solution before the Assyrians, before the Syrian be including. And it's interesting to see that this, this situation, all of a sudden, Ahaz is taking, and, and, and he is the one to bring all the gods that they are failures in Israel. For me personally, it's, it's incredible how human being can go and be when they abandon God. And also, for instance, Saul, the king, the first king of Israel, he, in the last moment of his life, he went to witch doctors. He went to the, the witcher in in, to ask for the death to come. And you wonder yourself, how can a human being, a godly individual, an individual who was so blessed by God, he's so miraculous, God goes to that situation in, in terms of that position. And one of, one of the things that I realize is that there are small things in our lives that drives us away from Jesus Christ. More things, more decisions, small decisions that we are far going far, far, far from Jesus to the point that we will not gonna hear again the Holy Spirit voice to tell us come back, and I see that that's that's a, the sin against the Holy Spirit. That was the, the end of his life, incredibly. Uh, and and my my prayer for all of those who are watching right now, and for me personally, is stay strong in the principles, and and stay close to Jesus Christ. And every time take decisions, small decisions, not to separate yourself from God, but follow Jesus Christ. Because you have no idea where you get. Satan is so clever, so wise, that he gives us little by little more pleasures. Because, by the way, bringing all of those gods of Ahaz was only based on pleasure. Because every single god was having a fiesta, was having a party. And Egypt, for instance, is very well known for their sexual immorality, including in the funeral services. So when they were having funeral services, they were including they had orgy, sexual, it's incredible. That, that, that go out of your mind. But the gods, so-called gods, they're providing pleasure, uh, sexual pleasure, food, uh, eating, uh, all of this pleasure. So it's, it's a carnal. So today I, I would I I like to contrast today that Satan is providing the same pleasures for us by television, uh, movies, by food, you eat everything you want to eat. Just do it. Just do it, and you'll taste. And you get to such a point that you do not recognize yourself, just like Ahas. Uh, um, I see when uh, when the prophet first came to Ahas, 
he the the well i think he thought that his his problem should be solved in a specific way and god wasn't doing it in that way so he didn't want god's solution mm -hmm. but now the um king is winning all these battles and instead of saying um that the king is succeeding because i have not listen to God and they're succeeding because of my disobedience. He's saying the king is succeeding because of his God's disobedience, because of his God's, his allegiance to the, his gods, the gods of Damascus. So he's aligning himself with what he perceived as success so that he can get part of that also, still turning his back on God because God isn't doing it the way he wants, wants to go. And I think we do that also. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, the, in the news, there is a fact that the lottery is in the billions of dollars, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't, I don't buy lottery tickets because I'm a Christian and I don't take um, chances, but if I just play this one time mm -hmm. and I get these billions of dollars, I could give it to God and help God with this and do that and the <laughs> mission. And so I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. You know, I'm a Christian, I don't listen to my horoscope, but I'm going to prove that they are wrong. I'm going to listen to it today and prove that it doesn't really um, come through as they say. And Satan is going to use that and it's, I'm going to have the day exactly like my horoscope. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to meditate. Um, I'm not really going to meditate like um, the yoga people and let the spirit come in. I'm going to meditate on Christ. Then you start doing that. You know, it's it's a it's one step. You know, it's it's harder in your mind, but once you take that first step, it's easier to go downhill and downhill and downhill. And God doesn't have to warn us against sin because it's a bitter pill. Sin is pleasure of the flesh for a moment, you know, either the pride of life, the um, your appetites, it feeds the appetite, it feeds the, 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 the flesh, the spirit, the, the man that's inside us, not the spirit of Jesus Christ. So I believe Ahaz talked himself into going that route and saying this route is leading to success. It's the same way, um, I have a relative who has joined a certain group and I tell him, you know, these people are, tell you they're, they're evil. They tell you they're evil. They tell you their leader is Satan, but yet you join them and they will say, well, yes, but, you know, there is always that but. And I think A has had that but in his life. And as you go down that road, it's harder for you, like the pastor was saying, it's harder for you to hear what the Holy Spirit says. And it's harder for you to turn around and do the right and forsake the wrong. And, and, and it's, it's, it's beautiful to see the fact that um, Ahas, for instance, had success in his beginning. Mm -hmm. so he, he, he paid Tigapi in the third the Assyrian to conquer Assyria and in a few years, probably I think in a 20 years, at least 20 years, more or less, he had peace. He was like, wow, that was the best investment ever. Like it worked. It's, it's working. Yeah, it's working. Uh, so Assyria, Assyria is destroyed. I have peace. For how many years was that peace? And when the success of God is accepted, is la it lasts forever. But right now, Satan is deceiving us, giving us some promises, as Sister Heather said in the lottery, for instance. You may gain a thousand or two thousand or a million dollars, but I do not know those people who are uh, who play the lottery being rich people because the way they get the money, the same way they will be spending the money. Mm -hmm. So there is, and, and by the way, just, just a short story, there has been a study made, if I'm not wrong, by uh, Harvard University, where they took a, a gentleman from the street. Uh, it was a homeless. They gave him $500,000. Uh, it was a, a few years ago. And they wanted to know 
if the money will make people rich, if he will be the one to change his life. In two years, he spent all the money, the $500,000 value wow. right now will be $5 million, something like that. I don't remember about the, the year was, was uh, what it was. So after two years, he spent all his money. They found him in the same place and they interviewed him and they said, hey, can you tell us about those $500,000? What did you do with them? And he said, it was the worst thing in my life. I will never want to have those money back. So the way that we spend, even though we have money, certain is, pro is providing, is giving us, because this is the tricky part, because he fulfilled his, his, uh, his uh, promises for a short period of time, but he cannot provide eternal life. I have to find the same deception in Amazon River, the witch doctors. They become, they, they are going to and, and obey his commandments. They have food, they have everything, they have power for a few years, but after a few years, they are killed by the villagers. So I'm, I'm all the time wonder why such people, they believe a liar and why mm, do yeah. people still believe a liar. This liar is not fulfilling his promise, not even for himself. He cannot have eternal life, not even for himself. How can he provide for us? So Ahas was this blessing in the way to see that, wow, I, I have achieved success. My strength, my gold, and my powers have been achieved that. And guess what? His destruction was worse than ever. Mm -hmm. I think it um, it says a lot about the the quote the grass is not always green, greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. How he looked at Tag, the king of Assyria and said Big that glass he, pie lesser that guy, that guy. <laughs> um, and said you know wow what he did worked and it worked better than what my God did so I'm mm -hmm. gonna go and do what they did and how it that ended up when he should have taking care of his own house. And I think it says that in Proverbs to, to be with your own, your own and your own stuff and take care of your own house and not go outside of your walls. Um, so I think that's also an interesting testimony to that. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what happened. Oh, you have something to say, Pastor? It, it says here in Psalm chapter 118, verse nine says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Mm. And that speaks directly to that. And I think we have to be careful of that today because we can do one little thing like you were talking about, even with the lottery or looking at even how people are able to enjoy something when they go, oh, I wish I could go out and have a glass of wine. They just look so relaxed. Mm -hmm. Or I wish I could go to the sale that they're having on Saturday mm -hmm. because they're going to save so much money. Yes. Um, you know, it's the little things that we think that someone else is living life better than we are because of what they're doing. And we are coveting sin at that point. And mm -hmm. I had this week, uh, this discussion with this pastor, this ex-pastor, and he's, he asked me this question. So you tell me that if you do not, if you do not keep the Saturday, you are not going to be saved. You tell me that you lose a blessing because you are not keeping that specific day and you are keeping the Sunday. It's the mystery, I would say this, that we don't have any explanation uh, how the blessings of God works in our lives. But brothers and sisters, it's better to choose and to obey God's principle than our lives. It is, it is first and overall has to be the law of God. And, and he, they call me or he called me uh, as, as a legalist. And, and I asked him then, I asked him a question. Look on the book of Revelation chapter 22, also verse uh, 14, if I'm not wrong. And also in Ephesians, in some other parts, parts of the Bible, who says that the thieves, the adulterers, the drunkard, the drinker, they are not in heaven. They are not going to go in heaven. Is that legalism? Is that legalism to say that? But for us, for me personally, and I would like to be every single day, the principles of God has to be above all. It is better to take refuge, to find refuge in Jesus Christ than in princes. Amen. So that's it's always I amazing. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go for it. Go I, for I, it. I was just going to agree with, you know, the things that Pastor was saying, because it is so amazing where people will say, um, 
why is it that you always um, come back to keeping Sabbath? Um, and what my question is to them, well, which of the 10 commandments do you think it's okay to break? Yeah, yeah. They only think it's the fourth commandment. They, they just cannot, or they can, I guess, but they're just not willing to see that God has a way and it is the way. There is no other way. Mm-hmm. Amen. The, the one he reminded us to re- that starts with remember mm. yeah. is the one he, he wants us to forget. <laughs> I think Satan that's wants us to forget. forget. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and let's see what that has to say. I have it. Okay. Yahweh said to me, take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen. For Mahashala has bars and I will take for myself faithful witness to testify. Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Zebrikiah. I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then Yahweh said to me, call his name Mahashalahazbaz. For before the child knows how to say my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Assyria. To what verse? To four. So you're good. Okay. So this was very specific in what God told Isaiah to do at this point in regards to naming his son and the timing. Why is this so important um, that this happened in this way? No room for doubt. Yeah. It, it, it reinforces everything else that he has said. Um, no room for misinterpretation. Mm, okay. And also the, the every time it's it's beautiful how God is putting the things because every time God is bringing a child and, and it, it's, it's bringing somebody with a name. I don't know if you remember, uh, for instance, Samuel, no? Mm-hmm. When, when he, he uh, their daughter-in-law, for instance, they they had to deliver and they put uh, uh, put names to the children. Uh, for instance, also Metusalach, no, Metusalach was the name that was after my death, the, the flood will come. In other words, during the time of every, during the time of the individual, the child, God was pointing out to his promise, to fulfillment of the promise. In other words, was not something written only in the, in the sand, the prophecy, but was existing physically so that remind everybody about yes. his, what he said so it was a symbol every single naming in the israel uh, they have a symbol they have a but when god gives the name when god raised give birth to a child like emmanuel god is that with us and then uh, to this gentleman mahershala has buzz that, that's difficult to not to uh to read. but uh, god is when you say promises it. that he will come to fulfillment and he is carefully that all what he says will come to fulfillment today and also tomorrow. So the Bible says also that the prophets are not going to tarry. Let us wait Jesus Christ's promise that of, of his coming because he will come. And like you said, that, that every name has a meaning. So what does Mahash, Mahashala Hashbath, I did try it, um, mean? You. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? And then look at the prophecy. How does, it, how does that work together? It's a spoil, cast the plunder, it says here in the lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words, throw me the ball. Another, <laughs> the other, tra- other translation, yeah. Yes, speed, speed the spoil, hasten the booty. Um, there's a couple other things, but. It's, and so, and then what did they say would happen by verse four? I mean, before he could even say mommy or daddy, what was gonna happen? Yeah. Quick conquest. So, right. so he was named before he was born that this was going to happen, and then that happened like right there. So let's look at um, 
what Isaiah has to say about that because we know that that happened. The king of Assyria comes in and wipes them out. <laughs> that's pretty much what happens. He said it was going to happen, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And but God never left them. And so let's look at what Isaiah says to the people um, about that. Let's read. Let's skip down to verses twelve through fourteen. I can read that through 14 or, or more, or, um, yeah, we'll just stop at 14. We'll stop at 14. Okay. Okay. So this is what the Lord said through Isaiah. Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So I really want to focus on that, on um, verse 13, mm -hmm. where it talks about the fear. Why would Isaiah tell the people of Israel to fear God at this point and not to fear what was going on around them? Well, it really says, um, verse 13 says, him you shall hallow, him you shall honor, him you shall um, trust and pay attention in, basically. And, it, you know, he's saying, let him be your fear. Don't be afraid. Be in awe of God. Let him be. Uh, if, if you're going to be afraid of anything, be afraid to offend God rather than to offend a man even a man who is king. I see here um, conquest, quick conquest. And before he says, um, well, basically, don't look to the conspiracies. Mm -hmm. Don't say a conspiracy. When these things happen, even now, we have a lot of conspiracy theories, the Illum Illuminati is controlling everybody. Um, the Pope is doing this. You know, there, there are lots of conspiracies, lots of theories going around. And he's telling us, don't concentrate on those things. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on what I have told you. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to that and be afraid of what's coming down the pipeline. Listen to me and tell and remember what I told you is going to be the, the conclusion of this whole thing. So I think that's, that's what it's because you could get bogged down in the conspiracies and so tied up with them that you forgot that God says mm -hmm. there is a remnant, mm -hmm. that God says um, you will return, that God says he's with us. You know, so sometimes when you're tied up with the conspiracy, you, you forget that God is with us and you just see that there's trouble all around. So he says, don't be afraid of that. Look to me with, with reverence and remember that I'm with you. Oh uh, yeah, I uh, thank you so much, Sister Heather, for that. I think it's beautiful the pastor speaking about the conspiracy and you brought it to our days. Uh, in that time, there, was, there were many, um, many fears. What should they do? How should they, where were they having to do it? All the time, the conspiracy has consumed God's people. Uh, and we are speaking right now. Uh, I was talking this week with a gentleman uh, in my office. And uh, I realized something that all things that are coming, for instance, conspiracies, they are coming to deceive God's people. Let me say it again. I, I'm studying or preaching also in Chesapeake and also in Hampton Roads a message regarding um, the, the, the deception that is taking right now place. I was studying the divide et impera, the Roman, uh, Roman strategy, philosophy, divide in your rule or divide in oh, divide conquer. And conquer. The, the, the divide and conquer. Yeah. That theory also has been taken by Machiavelli, one of the, you know, the, the, the philosopher and also the, the leader in, in Rome, in Italy. But he said something that is incredible. He said that when a general or a leader, a captain of an army, he becomes, becomes very strong. He said, he has 
to create division by making himself weak so that those people who trust him to fight between themselves so that he takes more power. So here's the incredible thing. In other words, people today, they, they talk about coronavirus not being real, pandemic is not real, and all of this. But everything on internet, everything we are reading right now is permitted, is allowed because they are working for the same purpose of putting people one against the other. Mm. So it's, it's incredible that the conspiracy theory or the, those who are ruling, who are leading right now, they are giving us food, what to eat, to believe that there is nothing or there is something only to keep us busy. But God's people, this is a, this is a header also uh, said, God told them, hey, do not say that that's a conspiracy. Trust me, fear the Lord, the, the Lord of hosts. Him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear. In other words, turn your eyes and turn your ears only to Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And you are not going to feel what's happening in the world. The world will be overwhelmed by the, problem, by the problems that will come very soon. But let us focus on Jesus to have peace. When everybody be, become crazy and, and, and their minds will be out of their minds, we have to be the solution. We have to be hope. We have to be somebody that the, the people need for others. If we begin in the conspiracy theories, and we know that Satan is the one to, to, to conspire against God. We yeah. do believe in conspiracy theory. That's Satan. We know what's going on. But if we begin to eat what the media is giving us, yeah. we have feelings and heart feelings, and we are, we are taken by those. Exactly. This passage applies to us today. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, too, these very kinds of things come into the church. Mm -hmm. um, and people will begin talking about, well, maybe this is not exactly the mm -hmm. what this Bible passage means. Maybe it has this meaning. And, and I see that sometimes where people can be led down a wrong path by someone coming in and just putting doubts in their mind. Mm -hmm. It's such an incredible danger. There's no need for us to be swayed by every wind of doctrine. If we stay studying with the Lord, if someone brings something to us that casts doubt on the things that we have learned, the very first thing we need to do is go to the Lord in prayer. And we need to talk to those who are our brothers and sisters that can help us to stay on the right path. We see, you know, that it's very easy to be led off in a direction that will take you away from the church, take you away from Sabbath keeping. Um, you take a little step out, and before you know it, there's another thing that comes along beside it. So, you know, this, I think, speaks to us today just as much as it did back then. We have to be like the Bereans. Mm -hmm. yes. Test everything against the word of God. Right. And be in the word daily. Yeah. And I think that test is what will keep us from straying away from truth. So let's look at another um, piece of untruth that they dealt with in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Let's read, let's go down to um, verses 16 through 22. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob and will hope in him. Here I am and the children whom the Lord has given me. Where are away we are for sins and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper at, at, uh, and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Uh, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this, this word, it is because there is no light in them. No. They will pass through uh, it hard-pressed 
and hungry and it shall happen. When they are hungry, that they will be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward. Then they will look to the earth and see trouble in the darkness, gloom and anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. So when we look at this, how can this be directly connected to Ahaz and what he was doing? He brought the gods, he brought the, brought the gods of all the other gods, which are demons in Israel. He sacrificed to the demons. And the Bible, the Bible also, we are telling us very clearly, be careful because we do not know. For instance, today, many people are worshiping in a wrong day. And they ask me, what's wrong with that? God said that you have to rest in one day, you know, the seventh day of the week. But if we are starting on Monday, then we have Sunday. This is what the argument of this week was. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if, you, if you start on, on whatever that day, you just take one day, the seventh day of the week, just take it. And, and what's wrong with that to worship in, in the Sunday? Well, let me say that if you do that oh, from, from the, without knowing what you are doing, God knows your heart and God saves you where you are because you try to do whatever is you, you believe that is true for you in that moment. But if the knowledge of truth is coming and you are keep doing it uh, against God, you worship not Jesus Christ, you worship something else. It's so hard. Yes, it's so hard because there is only black and white. It's only, there is no gray in between. Jesus Christ is very clear. If you don't have 100% heart to him, that not, Give all your, your heart to him, 99% will not going to save you. So today we have to understand that the truth sets us free from the bondage of Satan. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says very clearly that all world right now is under the evil. All world is laying in the evil. The only solution for our problems is to come to Jesus Christ. If not, the Bible says that we are worshiping some other God. And we have to be very careful with that because at the end of the day, when Jesus will come, he will ask us, what have you done with the life I gave you, the gifts I gave you, with the word I gave you? And many they say, Lord, we proclaim your name and we did miracles in your name. And Jesus will say, I have never, never knew you. Who are you? So it's such a thin line between worshiping God mm -hmm. and worshiping Satan. When you do not take commitment, full commitment to serve God, no matter what, guess what? You are automatically worshiping something else. Let me not use this word because it's hard for many people. But uh, God is judging you, brothers and sisters. God judge, judge us according to the knowledge we have, according to relationship we have, even though we know sometimes truth. Maybe we do not have the power to, uh, we don't have the power to overcome. And God understands us. God is with us. God has mercy for us. And But when you go automatically against God, as I has, for instance, he brought all the gods in his in Israel. He called the dead people. He 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 went on, on the other side. Automatically, God said, okay, you chose. I let you on your own ways to do. And what happened? A destruction came upon him. And upon all Israel. And two, there's there's no need for anyone to be deceived. We have the word. Yeah. If someone studies the word from beginning to end, there's no way of misunderstanding the things that God has said. The Ten Commandments were not given to the Jewish people at the very first they were given to abraham they were valid in heaven and when you read your bible and study and if you're a pastor you would think mm -hmm. that that they would be doing that all the time so there's still hope for people like that but yes. in the end you know they they will have to decide are they going to believe in man are they going to believe in god yeah, um, Ahaz, Ahaz went into what he went into because of apparent success. And some of us do that because life is hard. Living is great, but life is hard. And people see others and they think they're having such a wonderful time. Things are going great with them, you know, um, because of the 
things they follow and the things they worship. But Crystal said, um, because they think the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. But I like how Irma Bumbeck says that the grass is greener over the septic tank, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and- It's very true, by the way. <laughs> yeah. they, they get into these things and then they realize that they're neck deep in, in sewage <laughs> because they thought they were getting all this green grass and everything is going to be fine. Then the, but the, the thing you have to, this is the thing I always remind myself, Satan is a liar and the father of lies, you know? So whatsoever is not for God is from, from Satan mm -hmm. and it's a deception. It's a deception. He has been looking at the human race for thousands of years and he knows which buttons to push. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he, well, I don't, I don't want to give him too much credit, but sometimes my buttons are pushed and I have to actually say out loud, Lord, give me strength, send the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, nothing wrong with that. We have to, we have to re realize that he knows us. He knows what to do to get us to stumble. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And when Satan pushes that button, the Lord has already provided you an off switch. You don't have to react. So um, we, 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 we can, well, Satan wants to deceive us. Satan wants to deceive us and get us down that wrong path. And then when we realize he's going to say, well, you're so far down this path, there is no way back, mm -hmm. which is another lie. Yes, the I Lord is that. there with his hands out. So for people who are listening, because I know I have some friends that say, well, I've been such a horrible person. I've done these things in my life. I've committed these sins. There's no way the Lord is going to forgive me. He, he is going to forgive you. He has already purchased your forgiveness on that cross Amen. All these thousands of years ago, and it's for anybody whosoever will let them come. There is hope. Amen. And if you if you feel yourself, hey, I do not know where I am right now. I do not know exactly where am I in my life right now. Uh, what's going on with me? Where are, where am I heading right now? If you feel like this, uh, welcome in the club. But yeah. hear what, what the Bible says. Hear what the Bible says to the law. And to the testimony, if you feel that yourself that, hey, I do not know where am I going. This is the time to come to Jesus. The law, the Bible says, is the law of liberty. Amen. Jesus is creating, is giving you, is making you free. And the law is a character, is the love of God. So in other words, the law is Jesus, okay? To Jesus and to his testimony. And his testimony, as we know very well, is the miracle that he did in our lives. It's is the action that he's doing. And, and more pragmatically right now, Jesus is having a prophet. It's also Ellen Juwai that it's incredible how people, they, they let aside this prophet, but he's the one to say that, hey, this is the way that God has designed. Let's follow. And he prepared the way for us. It's Jesus Christ to the prophets also, as they are sharing us what will happen. So the law and the testimony, it's our backbone. Is the one that is holding us, and you will never ever be lost in the sense of, you know, uh, the, the, the deception. So every time, focus on that, and God will give you the blessing to understand, give you the power to do it, because His law will be in your heart, as uh, Hebrew chapter 8, verse 10 says. Amen. Amen. I think this is a good spot to wrap up our lesson for this week. I think that we have learned a lesson from what Ahaz did. And then we have something to take away to how we cannot end up in that same situation um, as we go through life's trials and tests because we do get those every day and there's a lot going on around us that may tempt us to go one way or the other. And I think holding on to, to like passes at the law and the testimony and knowing that there's a septic tank where the grass goes greener um, and we don't wanna fall into that, I think is a, a good takeaway for this week's lesson. So thank you all for your comments and for um, participating in Sabbath school this morning. And I will ask Pastor Stoyan to close us in prayer. 
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this Bible study we have, for the thoughts that you have given us. And Lord, we know that you have so many people watching at this moment, Lord, and they, they want you, they need you, Lord. And I hope Lord, that they can develop a strong relationship between you and them, a strong relationship only with you based on the Bible. Lord God Almighty, we are asking you to give us the power of the Holy Spirit to come in our lives to give us that, ba that backbone, to know, Lord, exactly what is your will with us. With us, there are so many people deceived, but we are thanking you, we, we thank you so much for your word that you have given us. Lord, if there is something in our hearts, something in our minds, though, that is not according to your will, please, Lord, help us give up to it. And we thank you so much for, the, for Jesus Christ's blood shed on the cross, that he provides salvation for every single human being. And we know that we are coming before you, Lord, every single time because you are all the only solution. Even though we are failures and we are making so many failures, Lord, in our lives, we know that we can come to you every single moment of our lives. So we are coming right now, Lord, in, before you to thank you so much for everything you have done and for the way that you are leading his, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for joining us for Sabbath School this morning. And we will see you back here next week where we will study Noble Prince of Peace. Amen. Well, Happy, Sabbath. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good night. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>